Hi, I'm Prislana and I'm an intern at Amtrak. Today, I have the great opportunity to interview the CEO of Amtrak, Stephen Gardner, on All Aboard with Stephen. Um, good morning, Stephen. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. Um, I hope the rapid fire has warmed you up because we went on Google and found some of the most burning questions that America has about Amtrak. Excellent. I'm looking forward to it. That's great. So the first question is, was the Amtrak CEO really an intern at Amtrak? Yeah, it's true. I started out as an Amtrak intern uh, over in Washington Union Station, so a little uh, few blocks away from us here at headquarters. And um, I worked uh, in the station environment. I had a small little office on track 15 and what looks like an old walk-in fridge. Uh, so I uh, had a really great experience learning about the railroad, meeting all the different people who uh, work day in, day out to deliver service to folks and getting a, a good understanding of all the pieces that have to come together to make the system work. And I, as an intern, I think it is so cool that someone who has been, quote unquote, an intern is at the helm of the company today. So intern to intern, how do you become CEO? <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, I certainly didn't expect to be CEO when I started, um, but I would say that uh, what has always helped me first is, of course, having an interest in something really makes a difference. So I always was interested in transportation, I always loved railroads uh, and transportation networks generally. So I came with a, a real desire to learn mm -hmm. and um, I was so lucky to have the opportunity to be surrounded by all these great people with tons of experience and also a passion for the job themselves. And they were eager to share what they had learned and I tried to soak up everything I could. I think as an intern, uh, sort of job number one is to be eager and curious. Mm -hmm. um, also sort of recognize the time and place, you know, because everyone's got to do a job and you're there to yeah. both learn and support. But um, I've found at my time at the company um, that there's always more to do than there are people and time available. So if you have an interest and uh, you can be creative and be of use, um, people are going to recognize that and, and, and take you up on all you have to offer. And, and that's really um, what I found uh, being here. Absolutely, and that's what also I have experienced at Amtrak so far. Um, so the next question is, what is the new era of rail? Well, we, we talk about a new era of rail, uh, really, I think, to describe maybe three things simultaneously. One is this huge generational effort we have underway at Amtrak to replace all the assets either we inherited or that came from our first generation with a new 21st century modern set of assets. So when I say assets, I mean our trains, our stations, our infrastructure, uh, our systems, all the things that help support the network and, and deliver service to customers. Um, we have had the huge honor of inheriting things from 100 years ago, 150 years ago, and they've done a great job, but they're not going to really be sufficient for the type of growth and service that we want to provide in the future. So there's a lot of work going uh, on around the company to replace all these assets with a new generation. And then we also think about a new opportunity in America to really rediscover the power of passenger rail. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the largest rail network of any nation on earth. And for about 140 years, that network was used to move both passengers and goods together. We need rail to do more in the United States for both freight and passenger. And we think that now is the time for the nation to rediscover this latent asset of this big network and this mode that did a lot to build America and shape the communities um, that we all live in today and, and I think can do a lot more in the future. So that's th that part. And then last but not least, we have the huge uh, sort of impending threat of climate change and needing to decarbonize our network, decarbonize our entire economy here in the United States and of course across the world. And we think rail is a huge part of 
helping to achieve that because it is the most efficient mode. It's the lowest carbon dense mode. And if we can just move more people by rail instead of taking those car trips or those plane trips, uh, then we can help uh, materially, I think, change the, the sector's emissions. Um, to do that, we need those great new assets and we need service in the right place, uh, serving the right communities. It all works together. What drove the passion for transportation? Oh, you know, I was just one of those kids who grew up liking big stuff that moved. <laughs> Uh, you know, anything really big that moved, I was pretty interested. And then I like the network feature of railroads, the sort of interconnectedness, the relationship to geography, place, all that stuff has always been just naturally interesting to me. Um, but I really got interested in railroads in particular when I had a chance as a young kid to um, spend some time around a, a big freight yard here in Washington, D.C. I grew up in Arlington, Virginia, mm -hmm. uh, a place where transportation was um, sort of in motion with the development of the subway system here. And, and then I spent some time around a big freight yard and saw all these, you know, interesting things happening simultaneously and said, that seems pretty, pretty cool. So, um, uh, and then uh, I just got, got lucky. I got lucky to be interested in this field and um, to uh, have the opportunity to, to get a little deeper. And every time I went deeper, I found more of interest and, and uh, it's never ended. So I feel very, very happy that I have a career in which I um, can be excited to come, come to work every day and focus on, on the things we get to work on here at Amtrak. Perfect. Um, and as a marketing intern, we use the phrase um, the new era of rail a lot on our social media and every marketing material that goes out. But as someone who is speaking to people across the company, I do see that this is so much more than a slogan to the people working here. It's that greater purpose. Um, so that's great. And the last question we have is, does Amtrak go to Canada? Absolutely. Um, well, it's a slightly complicated answer right now. We have three routes that go to Canada. One of them is currently suspended due to uh, some issues uh, of this summer, but we'll be back. So we serve uh, Vancouver, we serve uh, Toronto, and we serve Montreal uh, with three, three different state-supported services. So these are the services we operate together with our state partners. And we have ambition to uh, add a fourth route uh, through Michigan across uh, the river into Windsor and, and connecting with our counterparts and colleagues in Canada uh, via. So um, serving Canada is, a, is, is, is an important part of our network. And if you look at population uh, in Canada, it's very, very concentrated along the, the southern border. So it's really uh, a great fit for what uh, we can do. And, and again, partner with our, our Canadian colleagues there. Um, so we're looking to grow there and improve service uh, and, and enhance our partnership with uh, Canada. So with so many opportunities and challenges available, how do you prioritize well, good question. Um, you know, that prioritization comes from our partnership really with the other folks who we deliver this network with. So uh, sometimes people think of Amtrak as, as kind of a unitary actor, that we're the sort of be all and end all to the network. We get to make decisions and, and folks approach me all the time and say, well, why don't you serve Nashville, you know, <laughs> uh, and, and, and if I could, if we could just snap our fingers and make it happen, we certainly would love to do that. But um, in fact, it takes a big partnership to put service mm -hmm. together. We need usually a state partner uh, that's willing to be our, our co-investor and help develop the network. We need a federal partner um, that's also gonna, going to make that investment uh, decision with us and provide us the guidance and policy to support our network development over time. Um, and then we need usually to work with our host railroads, mm -hmm. the folks who own the, the big network out there in the United States and uh, for which we have rights to utilize the railroad, but we have to do that in partnership and, uh, and, and find uh, the right pathway for service. Beyond all that, of course, then we have to have the fleet necessary to run new trains and we have to have stations that can serve them and then we have to have facilities to maintain that fleet. So it's not nearly as easy as we wish it all was to sort of 
pick a point on the map and say, let's run trains mm -hmm. there. Um, but the good thing is that it's achievable. And with the level of investment that uh, is now available to Amtrak and our state partners and our host railroad partners uh, through the bipartisan infrastructure bill, there is uh, a whole new groundswell of effort to build new corridors and extend the network and try and put more service into the hands of the people of the United States and connect more communities and more people with more trains um, and, and get more value out of the big network we have today and, um, and, and in the process help communities and people prosper. No, and we look forward to seeing what Amtrak does in this new era of rail. Um, thank you so much, Steven, for joining us and having a chat. It's great. I'm really, really glad to do it. Thank you. And thanks for being an intern.